explaining the Shurangama Mantra with my blood, with my sincerity. The Shurangama Mantra is the longest Buddhist mantra. We call it magical words because it is extremely efficacious and wonderful. So wonderful it is beyond words. Whoever recites it will get a response. Vajra Treasury Bodhisattvas protect anyone who recites this mantra and uses it as a practice. To do this mantra as a practice, we must first of all be sincere and become straightforward. We must cultivate and eliminate our desire for material objects, which means to be free of greed. Being able to eliminate desire and reaching real understanding, being sincere and cultivating in the proper frame of mind, we would then experience tremendous miraculous results from doing this mantra as our practice. Some people rashly claim that the Sharangama mantra is as long as it is because it is composed of many short mantras. People who make such claims are worse than children, who in general repeat what adults say, thinking that that will keep them from making mistakes. The Sharangama mantra starts by taking refuge with all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions, who pervade all of space in the Dharma realm, all Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, who pervade all space in the Dharma realm, Arahats, sages of the first fruit through the fourth fruit, and gods. Taking refuge with gods does not mean that we are committed to emulating them. It just means that we respect them. Actually, monastics do not need to pay homage to anyone. In fact, gods are supposed to pay homage to members of the fully ordained Sangha. So why should we pay respects to the gods? Gods pay homage to those with virtue and those who have cultivated. No one should be arrogant and say, you know, all the Dharma protecting gods bow to me. Even if we were to have perfected our virtues, we should not be conceited and think we are better than anyone else. Even then, we should be as if we have none of whatever it is we have, emptied of what is actually there. We must not be attached to our virtues. We must never be satisfied with the amount of knowledge we have. This way, we are cultivators. Cultivators who recite this mantra and do this mantra as a practice should venerate the gods and good spirits, even the bad spirits. That is, we should curb our habit of arrogance. The benefits from chanting the Sharangama mantra as a practice are ineffable. I do not want to tell you what these benefits are exactly, because if I were to tell you and you recite it out of greed, then what benefit could you possibly earn? You would not be doing it because you really want to recite and practice this mantra. If you really want to recite and practice the Sharangama mantra, then you should regard it as important as eating, putting on clothes, and sleeping. This is what we should do. If not, we can just forget about getting our prayers answered. Once we think about it, it is a false thought. How could we indulge such ideas when we have not perfected our skill? That would be like a child who is already thinking about running when he has barely learned to sit up. He cannot even walk, yet he wants to run. Now, why does he think in this way? It is because he does not understand. And then once he knows how to run around, he wants to fly. And you think he could do it? Impossible. In the same way, why do you think about what is impossible? You are not a bird. You have not grown wings, and yet you want to fly? This is a huge false thought. The same principle applies to holding the Sharangama Mantra. Cultivation is just cultivation. Do not harbor thoughts of wanting something out of it. I am definitely going to get something, we think. What are we going to get? I am not going to die. No, when the time comes, you will die just the same. There is no way to escape death. That was a false thought you had. But if you cultivate seriously and certify to sagehood, then you will really end birth and death, and that counts. But if we were to think, I do not want to die, I do not want to die, I do not want to die, I am going to guard this stinking skin bag of mine. We may guard it all we want, but when the time comes, we have to say goodbye and go away. The Shurangama Mantra is a magical language. Each phrase that you recite has its own special effect. But you should not dwell on its effect. Do not think, why have I been reciting it for so long without any tangible results? When you eat, you appease your hunger for the time being. How could you expect to be full forever? When tomorrow comes, you still have to eat. During the Sharangama mantra as a practice is just this way. Do it as a practice every day, and you will not have wasted any effort. 
you will experience its effects eventually. Whoever recites the Sharangama Mantra as a practice has to his left and right 84,000 Vajra Treasury Bodhisattvas who are always guarding him. That is true. However, when you recite this mantra, it is best that you do not indulge in false thinking. If you keep on having random thoughts when you recite, the Vajra Treasury Bodhisattvas will think, this person is really useless and has no future. He's wasting my time. You have to be careful, because Dharma-protecting Bodhisattvas can get angry, and they do. The most important thing about doing the Sharangama Mantra as a practice is that we observe the precepts purely. If we do not observe the precepts, no matter what we cultivate and however we recite, there will be no response. If we observe the precepts and are free of jealousy, obstructiveness, greed, anger, and delusion, then we will enjoy a major response and reap a tremendous amount of benefit when we recite the mantra. I will say this, reciting the Sharangma mantra and using it as a practice is more valuable than dealing in gold. The Sharangama mantra, recited once, is as valuable as millions and millions of ounces of gold. But of course, you should not uphold the mantra out of greed. I cannot say that my way of lecturing the Sharangama mantra is poor. But I can say that nobody has ever lectured it in this way before. I composed a four-line verse for every line of the Great Compassion Mantra, which described the function and power of the given line of mantra. Now, of course, in a four-line verse, we can hardly explain all of the power of a given line in the mantra, because the wonderful meaning of the mantra is inexhaustible. Every single syllable and phrase of that mantra has boundless benefits. Obviously, this is more than a four-line verse could contain. Although we cannot describe it in its entirety, we can talk about it a bit. But that bit of description will only be a small percentage of all the meaning contained there within. Four-line verses are easy to remember. From the simple, you can enter the profound. From the few, you can enter into the many. From what's near, you can go to what's far. In this way, you can deeply enter the meaning of the mantra. Actually, one cannot talk about the mantra or try to explain it, but we will try to do it anyway, the purpose being a modest spur to induce someone to come forward with his valuable contribution. That is why I am explaining the Sharangama mantra now. It should not concern you whether these four lines are meaningful enough, or even totally accurate. Just realize that they come from my heart. You can say they are my sweat and blood. I explain the Sharangama Mantra with sincerity. I hope after listening, you will truly understand the meaning of this mantra, even more deeply and more, more profoundly than I do. I hope the magnitude of your comprehension surpasses mine. That is why I say this is a modest spur to induce other valuable contributions. I hope you discover your wisdom and illumine the Sutra treasury so that your wisdom becomes like the sea. People who study Buddhism should always aim for the best. Always try to be better than you were before. You should not say, I understand it, but I do not know how to cultivate it. It must actually be cultivated. If you do not cultivate, then no matter how much you know, it does not make sense at all. It is of no use. You must cultivate seriously. Put your feet firmly on the ground and actually put the teaching into practice. Do not be so foolish as to steal a bell with your ears plugged cheating yourself and cheating others. My wisdom and my mind are introduced in these four-line verses that I authored. I am explaining the Sharangama Mantra sincerely in the hope that all of you will understand more.